found my Makita bag. I'm coming prepared for this one, very prepared. I am shamelessly bringing as many tools as I possibly can from this shop. I have them all laid out right here, but we'll go through them. First and most necessary super glue and baking soda. I really hope nothing leaks. A square, a pencil, a pokey thing, a sharp knife, another sharp knife with a relatively new blade, sanding sticks with the pointy edges and the round edges, a file, a good saw, a crappy saw, good pliers, tweezers, a sanding block, 100 grit and 220 grit sandpaper, three different brushes, two are pretty much the same, and then I have a chip brush for a clear coat. The clear coat, which is five minute epoxy, accelerator for the super glue and baking soda, tungsten ball bearings for weight, tiny hooks with the split rings, with the split rings, what am I trying to say? For, for, for a bunch of different eyes, so I have choices. Green paint, orange paint, yellow paint, and blood red paint, and black paint, and white paint. I hope none of those opened. How about a pen? Why not? Is that it? I'm really tempted to bring this. That's as, that's as, as cheating as it gets, but I'm already cheating. And the, I have the Makita bag that goes with it. Woo. This one's missing a wheel. That happens quite a bit. <clears throat> oh. Oh, I would have brought that and then not remembered to bring wire. We just avoided a catastrophe right there. We got the wire. Am I forgetting anything? Riverbank build with power tools. Do I have any other power tools that would make my life easier? I got a plug-in in my truck. I could bring a Dremel, do it on the tailgate. I don't know if that'd work. No, you need 120 volt and the truck's 12, I think. Never mind. Okay, see you on the riverbank. The water is up there. I just scared an eagle. Two eagles. As I was saying, the water is up there. It's okay. This is no problem. It's just more of the river to love, you know? But that also means I need to find a new spot to do my riverbank build. I think I just walked up on it right here. No, no problem at all. Voila. We can just use a tree for a workbench. You guys remember this? Got wood off of this one time for a for an old riverbank build. There's the cottonwood. This is a giant dead cottonwood tree. It's pretty big. And cottonwood worked really good last time. Like super good. Let's just take a little piece and use it. This one's rotten. I want this piece. Ow. I'm gonna break my hand getting it off though. I want that piece. Okay. I'll settle for that. Get out of here, stick. Okay, what are we making? Since it's still winter, the water's still cold, it is definitely not above 55 degrees water temperature. I think the best thing to do would be to make a jerk bait. This is going to be a jerk bait and there's no external lip. I think the front of the head's just gonna have a, a slope. We gotta rip this down a bit, get it smaller. But, like, I wanna be in the good wood right here, or the good bark. Can't call this wood. And what we're gonna get out of this is a little rectangle of cottonwood bark. Right there. That is what we needed, right there. There's just a little bit of ugliness up here on the corner. I'm gonna try to stay away from that, carve out of that. I kinda want a flat bottom jerk bait though. I need a big one of these, one of them's right there. A big line, that's what's gonna catch the water. Give it a bit of a back, boom. The shape is, am I, I'm really having trouble. Maybe the ISO does not need to be up, right? There, that's probably better. That is the shape of this lure, that's what we're dealing with right there. Now I have to cut this out. Take the bulk of it off with a handsaw. I'm gonna make sure to cut that lip angle though exactly how it needs to be on the head there. Wow, I messed that up. 
It's okay. I can carve it down with a knife. <laughs> Things got a little choppy there. My bad. Like if I had a vice. Ooh, I could have brought my vice. Could have clamped it to this tree. And I could have done that out here. Maybe next time, okay? So you guys, surviving is about bringing the most conveniences possible outside and using those to survive. Make sure you get all your toilet paper. <laughs> it's not about knowing what to do with what's already out here. That's just silly. Don't be barbaric. I'm gonna give this bait a taper even. I'm gonna mark some points on the tail and on the head up here. Actually, I, I need to leave the head wide so it's just gonna be a taper down to the tail. You just gotta accept it's gonna be rough, like you're making a bait on a fallen tree out in the woods next to the riverbank. Feels good to have power tools in the woods, you know? I, I don't think anybody can deny that. I'm so glad we got this spot to ourselves today. I mean, I don't know why anybody would come down here. It's flooded and the fishing's horrible. We'll figure out a different fishing spot, but we'll make the lure here, of course. Riverbank build, we have to make it on the riverbank. I guess I just took a little break for no reason. Breaks are good. Let's get back to it. Here we have the roughly carved out shape of what this lure will be. Nice tail taper, nice large flat section on the head. I need to make sure my treble hooks are appropriately sized. Um, they're a little big, but they will work. Now I'm gonna get to sanding this thing. There's a little bit of boogeriness up here on the back. I should have cut my piece out of this a little deeper into the good wood, but I didn't, so this is what we're dealing with. I'm gonna start with 100 grit. And now is when we break out the power tools in the woods. Get your bits. I don't want to drop these. That would really suck if I dropped all these. My tungsten ball bearings that I'm using to weigh this are one eighth of an inch in diameter. So a quarter inch. I'm going to use a quarter inch bit to make a hole. Two holes right next to each other. I'm going to fill those holes completely. It would be cool if this sunk and then had an action. I might not fill them completely. I'm just going to go off of feeling and try to make it work. There are no measurements to go by here. Here we go. I am eyeballing this too. This stuff is better to work with than balsa wood by far, but it feels like it's the same specific gravity or density as balsa wood. I like this stuff. I need to calm down and keep making this lure. Boom. There's a decent sized hole to fill with tungsten. You also have to remember that the super glue and baking soda sinks, so that will help too. How many balls will this lure have? Let's see. That's five, six. Oh my gosh. Goodness gracious. Um, dang it. One of those, just one of those balls are over a dollar each and I just spilled two onto the ground and I'll never find those because it's a, the ground is just a bunch of leaves down there. I'm not even gonna bother looking for them. I was able to fit something like eight of them in there, so. It's got weight. I'm gonna cover this, nope. No, no. I'm gonna dump these out, being very careful. I have to cut the through wire slot first. That would have been kind of bad, because this saw will not make it through tungsten. Another moment in my life where I need to cut a straight line. Kind of straight. That was kind of straight. I mean, how straight is that? Comment below. Give me an adjective. Or no, give me an adverb. I'm Just say really. Just comment down below, really straight. Because that's how straight that is. Mm. I am feeling good about this one. Perfect. Now I need to make the through wire. The first thing you make usually is the line tie. And you just bend a piece over. Squeeze it down to where it's the size you want. So that's the size I want. Stuff it up in the bait without cracking the bait. Oh, I'm gonna crack this bait if I don't sand that slot out a little wider. Why are geese so dislikable? I hate geese. And I have no real reason for hating geese except they poop so much around the ponds I fish. That doesn't really even bother me though. I just, I say with confidence that I do not like geese for no reason. I'm sure some of you understand. The other day I watched these two geese just, they like wrapped necks or something and they're biting each other, but they were like slapping each other on the sides with their wings for 15 minutes. I was kind of keeping track of time and it 15 minutes passed. And they were, they, I think they only stopped because they got so exhausted. 
I just don't like geese. So we're not gonna be able to fit as many tungsten bearings in this as we did before, because there's gonna be a through wire slot in the way, but we'll we will still be able to get some in there. It's good that I went with a quarter inch hole. Okay, do you fit now? Please fit. Yeah, you fit. Okay, I'm feeling some decent sized raindrops falling. I need to hurry up. There is the wire harness for this jerk bait. Integrated lip jerk bait. Is that what this is called? That's kind of cool. The rear hook hanger right there is where I want it, so I'm gonna cover it in glue and give it a spritzy spritz. Now you go down the line. Now I need to put the middle hook hanger where I want it. Drop my pliers right in the mud. Awesome, now they're gonna be all crunchy. There we go. That one's where I want it. Now it gets the glue. No, I don't want the glue. Too bad. But then if you're even able to move the last one, you shove it where you want it. It didn't move at all, it's gonna be right there. It's kind of stupid looking, it's sticking out too far and I'm a little disappointed about it, but it's gonna get the glue. No questions asked. I got a little bit of mud on it, no big deal. I've filled one of these with dirt before to use as weight, so this is probably the cleanest one yet. There we go, I'm gonna fill this hole now with the tungsten, as much as I can stuff in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Ooh, I can get eight in here, I can get more than that. What happened? Why can't I fit more in here now? That's nine. I can get one more. We can use all 10. Wow, there's 10 in there. Isn't that crazy? I thought that was crazy. Wow, what the heck? Okay, gonna cover them in glue so they stay still. Get your baking soda out. This is the most important part right here. I hope you're focused. I left some accelerator on here, making the baking soda kind of hard to work with. I hope when I apply the super glue, everything doesn't just blow up. This stuff is magical, so there's no telling what it will do. Okay, the wind's picking up and it's, it's raining harder. I really need to hurry. Everything, including that through wire slot, is sealed over. Now I'm gonna sand it smooth. I just saw a fish surface. Seriously? It's winter. I'm gonna tie this to my pole right now and cast it a few times and see how it works. It's the first time I've seen a fish surface this year. Oh man. Let's get these hooked up. Probably just a carp, but I just got excited. There's no way you're gonna be able to see this lure in that dirty water though. I'm not even gonna try to show you guys its action yet, but I am gonna cast it and maybe try to catch a fish for a while. I'll just have that camera rolling, so wish me luck. Woo, I need a new line for this pole. It's a slow sink. It sinks slow. It's really good. I can't wait to show you guys. It casts really well. I'll get it back. Okay, so this video just turned into a rescue mission. Quite urgent. That lure that we just spent all that time to make is stuck about 12 feet up in a tree. Um, I have ratchet straps, two of them. I think they're 14 foot. I think I can lasso that branch and break it off and get my lure back with ratchet straps. Well, straps from the ratchet straps. Ratchet straps. <laughs> Where's my lure? I hope this is long enough. Just gonna step on one end very, very tightly. You know what? I'm gonna hold on to one end. No. That's closer. Why am I an idiot?
This is not a one day, okay? This is not a one day. I never showed you the time at the beginning. I said it might be a one day and it's been determined that this is not a one day. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna think about my options and I'm gonna come back here tomorrow. One sec, let me, let me make sure that's even a possibility with the weather. Whew, okay, no. 80% chance of rain. This might have just been a failure. Ooh, ouch. Was, I just snagged that lure in a tree, I'll never get it back. Until the water goes down, then I can climb that tree, but still, that's pretty high up. Let me show you. That's the base of it. And then right center screen is where my lure is. But the base of it goes down another five feet to the bank. I, I just thought of what I can do. It's your guys' lucky day. Twofer. You fellows are getting the twofer today. That's right, we got the riverbank build, which we did, kinda. A little bit of a riverbank build. Let's just get it out of the way. It failed, hardy har. Comment below, make fun of me, go ahead. It was pretty dumb, I'm, I'm not, in denial of how stupid that ended up. I'm go ahead. Have at it. But I'm gonna do it. It's happening now. We're finishing the praying mantis. It won't be another video. It's this video. You're welcome. Here we go. But by finish this I mean just paint it and clear coat it. Because that's all it needs. And I kind of already started painting this white off camera not too long ago. We're gonna start with a poison green is what it's called. I thought this would be a good color for the praying mantis. It's new. This paint smells a little potent. Let's get that going. This paint's very thin. It's taking a lot. I'm gonna put the same amount on the back piece, but I might switch to a different green. It's making it look very natural though. Lots of yellow still. That's a good start. That's very detailed and natural looking with just one spray. I gotta cover up that lead hole, but looking good. So yeah, next there's some stuff I gotta get out of the way. I need to come back to it with some white and cover up like that lead hole. And where I'm gonna have changing colors, I'm gonna hit with the white before I go to the other color too. Stuff like that. Spraying white in spots, that's what I'm doing next. I went from a 0.5 millimeter nozzle to a 0.35 millimeter nozzle on my airbrush and it's annoying. It's just not easy to get paint out of this thing anymore. I do not like having to thin paint, but I might have to do that now. I looked and I looked and I looked and I tried to find the same 0.5 millimeter nozzle I had before, but couldn't find it. It's like they only sell those on the original airbrushes you buy. Bummer, man. Cause I knew that was gonna be annoying. Like this, this nozzle barely sprays water. I'm this close to just buying a whole new one with the 0.5 millimeter nozzle. I'm picky about my airbrushes. Let's just continue though. Wicked Oxide Red. You guys see that? Where it's darker right there and then it kind of off into the belly. Stays kind of dark reddish colored. It's like a rust color. That's what we're gonna do now. Drop of that and a ridiculous amount of reducer. It's a rust color. There, orangish kind of on the belly where it transitions from the front piece. That'll look natural. Now, the eyeballs. Kind of need to be that rust color. I'm gonna use what's left in there and brush it on. You know, most of the time if I did something that stupid in a video, where I just completely lose a lure because I was trying it out and I casted it into a tree before it was even done. I wouldn't post that video, but I think I'm gonna post this video and just get over it, you know? People can be stupid, and I'm a good example of that. I tried, you know? Probably should have tried harder, but I was kind of trying. So, those might look out of place, but there's more to do to them. That's a good base coat for the eyes, though. This is just really coming together, I tell you what. So I'm going with the darker green now. I'm gonna put that over some spots. Not the whole thing, just some spots to give depth and other 
artistic words and stuff to this bait. This is actually a detail moss green, is what it's called. If you're able to tell a difference, you might have some sort of rare ability, but it did add depth. There's dark spots and there's light spots, and I was actually pushing paint around. Like it's a really high PSI, my airbrush, and I was pushing paint to the edges to make it darker over there, but sorry, I'm all shaky. I drank a lot of coffee. The serrated wing back here, I'm gonna do one more thing to it, and this bait's almost done. One more thing to the serrated wing, and then a little bit more to the eyes, and this bait's done. But thank the Lord I can put my airbrush away and be done with that garbage. I'm getting a new one, I don't care. I'm not a hap, I'm not a happy camper. <laughs> I'm not a happy camper if my airbrush isn't working well. I have an unhealthy dependency to how well my airbrush functions, and it needs to be good. So, pearl white. No, let's go with pearl platinum. Let's be fancy. I'm gonna put some of that on the back side of a cup. Not inside of the cup, you use the other side, like this. Don't ask why. Mixing that up with a drop of reducer, one to one. And what you're left with is a, a very liquidy, pearly, translucent paint. And then I'm gonna go over the serrated wing section back here with it. And hopefully that just makes it look like it's a different material than everything else. Just pearlizing it, really. And after doing that, I just realized something I should do for this whole bait. You flip the cup over now and use the other side. Multiple surfaces, that's, that's why you do that. Drop of detail sapia and probably like four drops of reducer. You wanna be getting close to water. More than four drops, needs more than four drops. And oh boy, this might destroy this bait right here. What I'm going for right here. This might be fine, actually. You see that dark line making its way down? I am highlighting stuff. Mm -mm -mm. It's working. So yeah, added some darkness in the cracks is all that that did. Added a ton right there. I'm just gonna wipe it off, but it stays in the cracks. Texture, detail, artistic words. And now, the last thing to do is this. <laughs> that's, that's it right there. Let's get that a little more pronounced. They have small pupils, focal points on the tips of their eyes, or in the center of their eyeball. That's it, but we're actually not done. I need to mold those legs. And I made a mold. So let's get this clear coated and then mold some legs. Six drops. We need more. 10. I think these arms are gonna be a way brighter green than the rest of the body, but I don't wanna take the chance of mixing in like a yellow or a brown and not knowing exact amounts, you know? I already failed at that, by the way. This is too bright, so I think this was like five drops. Then I just went with 10, so I doubled the greenage. Ready for demold. I think. It's a little soft. That's a good green. This is almost yellow compared to that green. So, 10 drops, 0.3 ounces. Just gonna let this vibe somewhere. Has a bit of hardening left to do. That was my phone, I didn't fart. Gotta be careful now. Clear coat set. Gonna get a sharp knife and try to break the clear coat off of the arm there before I just go ripping the clamp off. I was using the clamps to keep the connections away from the body as the clear coat sets. This one's pretty easy, yeah. Didn't need to do anything for it. You gotta do the same thing with screw eyes. Cut the clear coat all the way around where the screw eye goes in and then twist it out and it'll come out clean instead of breaking chunks off. Oh boy, here we go. Back piece is going on. Nice. 
Now I need to get the arms on. I got them molded and I got the flashing cut off and everything. And they are way brighter green. <laughs> like, they don't really look appropriate, let's be real. But maybe that'll offer some fish catching potential. A nice bright accent. You gotta look at things in a positive way. Am I right? Nice bright accents. Just trying to break away enough clear coat from these joints on the arms where they just dangle freely. See, if you were a fish, wouldn't you just hit those super bright green arms? Okay, I had an idea and I might be destroying this bait. Well, this isn't destroying the bait. I just might be making these arms look worse than what they originally were, so please bear with me. I'm just scuffing it up with some dark paint. The resin isn't completely set yet and it's gonna accept some uh, pigment. I have resorted to finger painting because I want full coverage and it to be messy, but it, it's working. I don't know, that just took it down a notch and added a bunch of detail. So I guess that's what I was going for. There we have it, folks. That is the finished praying mantis lure with the two hooks on the back, which yes, I, I'm assuming those will get tangled. I should have put one right here and one back here. That would have made a lot more sense, but I did not. That's where they are. And this is the finished lure. I'm thinking I'll give this bait a fair shot first at the lake. See what it does. I guess we'll attempt to catch a fish. Maybe we'll get a fish first cast. Who knows? Let's go. Look who decided to join us. <laughs> and this fella. I forget even how to work this thing. You recording? Yeah. No. <laughs> it's just nice to be outside. Yes, it is. Were those lucky old people? Possibly. That was kind of surprising. Despite my intentions for this lure to just be as much of a praying mantis as possible, it functions. It functioned de pretty well. I don't doubt that this year I will catch a fish with this. I'm, I'm pretty certain I will. Is it all, it's even kind of a fun kind of topwater lure to use because you gotta twitch it fast and, and very lightly and it does end up having this like Little wobble on the top, and it's pretty easy to produce. And it looks like something a fish would want to bite. A fish blowing up on a praying mantis struggling on the top. Of course I didn't catch a fish. It's not top water season at all, <laughs> but you get a giant whopper plopper going crazy on the top in the summer. You get hits all day around here, so like, this should be no problem. I kind of plan to do that too. A video where all the baits that I still have, but was not able to catch a fish with, hit them hard in one video fish all day and get fish on a lot of different lures. That'd be, that'd be fun for me. I'm down, let me know. Get this video to 20,000 likes, 50,000 likes. Find 40, 30, 35, 35,000 likes, then I'll do it. It's almost a good feeling when you're at a complete loss for what to do next. It's a, that's a good feeling. I have ideas, I just don't know which one to pick. So, on to that. On to the next bait. Ooh, ouch. 
You just gotta accept it's gonna be rough. Ratchet straps. Feels good to have power tools in the woods, you know? It's just more of the river to love. I, I don't think anybody can deny that. Up there. So yeah, just, just gotta get this video to 100,000 likes and you might see me catch a fish with this later.